This is a Security Weekly production. Black Hills Information Security, the leaders in penetration testing and active defense. Email consulting at blackhillsinfosec.com to request a quote today. This episode of Hack Naked TV is brought to you by IT Pro TV. With IT Pro TV, you gain access to the most important tools needed to prepare for your IT certification. IT Pro TV has thousands of hours of up to date, high quality video content. Course topics include CCNP. CompTIA Advanced Security Practitioner, Ethical Hacking, Virtualization, Cryptography, SSH, Microsoft Server 2016, and more. You can stream their courses live and on demand to your Chromecast, Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple TV, PC, or mobile device. They have one low monthly subscription price and you can cancel at any time. Corporate pricing is available and clients include Harvard, MIT, UCSD, Stanford, and more. Check out itpro.tv forward slash hack naked to upgrade your brain with the most popular IT certifications. Use the code hacknaked30 for a free seven day trial and save 30% off for life. Hello and welcome to this edition of Hack Naked TV for May 17th, 2016. I'm your host, Bo Bullock, and today I'm going to talk about some critical vulnerabilities that were found in both 7zip and Symantec AV. I'm going to talk about uh, Facebook open sourcing their CTF platform as well as uh, a new framework you can use to go attack OS X systems. Let's jump right into the critical vulnerabilities found in 7-Zip. So some researchers at uh, Cisco Talus actually discovered multiple vulnerabilities in our favorite zipping software, 7-Zip. Two vulnerabilities uh, originate from input validation issues, which as most of us know, are it's the, the cause of pretty much all application security issues, input validation issues. Um, you see, the, the, the biggest problem with this particular vulnerability, and the reason I, I wanted to kind of emphasize on why seven, a vulnerability in 7-Zip is so bad, is because a lot of people just imagine, you know, it's just the software client that I use to, you know, unzip software. Yes, yes, that's a bad thing, you know, that I could, I could potentially exploit a client, right, because I have a, a software that unzips things. That's bad. What's worse is that a lot of vendors actually include 7-Zip in their own software process. So a lot of AV engines, um, some of the, the actual like uh, malware detonation type of devices uh, also include 7-Zip when they start to pack or unpack the, uh, the malware that they're analyzing. Uh, so some, some examples, FireEye, Malwarebytes, Komodo, uh, other AV engines typically use 7-Zip on the back end on their server. So you know, while this is something that is, yes, it's very bad because, you know, your client's vulnerable, but it's also way worse because all the other security products are potentially vulnerable as well. Um, and it is it is a very uh, critical vulnerability as it is a remote execution vulnerability, meaning an attacker could potentially take over the device that uh, is running 7-Zip, an old version of 7-Zip. The good news is that Talos worked with 7-Zip very closely to get a patch for this out quickly. So what you need to go do is go update all your 7-Zip software to 16.0 immediately. Uh, you're gonna probably want to check out all of your third-party devices, uh, your appliances, and see if they've got a patch for it as well. So, go do that. Symantec Blue Screen of Death vulnerability. This one is a little bit hilarious because uh, the, the proof of concept literally blue screens your, your Windows system. And the worst part is it's not just a Windows-based uh, vulnerability either. It's a vulnerability in all Symantec products across Mac, Linux, and Windows. So uh, researcher Tavis Ormandy from Google, who does awesome, awesome work with pretty much any AV engine that you can imagine, uh, discovered a critical, exploitable flaw in Symantec AV. The th thing that's kind of awesome about this is that you literally just have to email a malicious file to the target you want to blue screen. Um, and it will trigger the vulnerability because Symantec and also Norton will uh, scan files as they come into the OS. And uh, the thing that's, um, things kind of, I mean, it's, it's, it's crazy, right? Because like you could just literally email somebody a file and have a root, vulner root exploit uh, remote via just emailing a file or downloading a file. So 
Uh, yeah, blue screen's a Windows system currently, but you know, you could imagine it actually performing way worse things as it is actually executed code in the kernel. Um, Symantec's live update is fixing this on some systems. Uh, they don't have it fully patched on everything yet, but if you do use Symantec, you're gonna wanna go look for a patch uh, as soon as possible um, because you don't want to be coming into work and all of your Windows systems blue screen because somebody sent an email out to everybody. Facebook CTF platform that they just open source. This is this is awesome, right? I think it was it was last month. I, I did a review about NetWars, which is a, uh, a CTF based type of environment hosted by SANS. I love CTFs, and I think this particular thing is really awesome because it it's Facebook basically giving you the ability to go put on your own CTFs very easily. So let's talk about that. Um, they they open sourced it. They put it out on GitHub, and you know, when we look at when we look at CTFs and how how they contribute to the education of people that are newly coming into security, I always recommend doing them because they they really help push you to the the limits of your, your knowledge. And you know, it's it's typically a solvable base um, a solvable group of challenges that um, you know it's it's meant to be solved, right? So um, you know, it's not just typically it's not just so far beyond. Uh, the people that are competing, that they're not going to learn anything. You want it to be an educational environment. So being able to go put your own on is kind of cool. So, I mean, as an organization, you might want to consider, if you have an organization and uh, let's say you have your own security team, you might want to consider making your own CTF um, for them. You know, I'm sure it's it's probably not something that you have thought of as at the top of your, your, uh, your priority list, but... You know, it, it could be a very, very interesting educational platform for your security team as well. Um, so the thing that's awesome about this particular platform is they include everything. Um, they include the admin side to set up the challenges. So, uh, you know, you as the administrator of your own CTF could build build out questions, answers. Uh, you can set up a registration so that people that, like, if you wanted to host it, um, with a, a large group of people, they can come and register, sign up, so you don't have to worry about the whole registration process and the user management. Um, and there's also a scoreboard. So as, as the CTF progresses, you can watch as everyone starts poning all your challenges. Um, you can, so with the, the Facebook CTF, there's actually a, uh, either a Jeopardy or King of the Hill style CTF that you could host. Jeopardy meaning it's, it's got like, you know, the typical way Jeopardy looks with, you know, questions, um, Questions equaling a certain number of points, um, and then with with the King of the Hill style, you uh, you have participants that are trying to take over a specific uh, set of assets and keep keep control over it for a certain amount of time, and they get points based off of how long they can control those. Um, so it's you know really cool if you if you want to go build your own CTF, you can do it now uh, very easily. Um, you know previously, if you wanted to go make your own CTF, you'd have to kind of consider all these things. You'd have to consider oh I need a scoreboard, I need to put together the you know the the submission part where you know users are actually submitting answers to my scoreboard and got to keep you know potential security issues out of it which by the way uh, the the Facebook CTF is actually under their own bug bounty program so if you do find a vulnerability in the Facebook CTF platform you can submit it to Facebook and uh, potentially get a bounty for it so anyways check it out it looks awesome you I might have to go build my own CTF sometime soon so keep an eye out for that uh, let's talk about Empire with the emphasis on Pi for Python. So uh, about a, I guess it was probably a year ago, I did a, a full demo on PowerShell Empire. Um, so the actual developers of PowerShell Empire have come out and built Empire, again, the emphasis on Pi, for Python. Uh, so PowerShell Empire is a framework that we use in pen testing all the time now. Um, it's great for post-exploitation, pivoting around using PowerShell. Um, creating stagers in PowerShell. Now they have built that functionality. They ported it over to Python. Uh, you know, for from a post exploitation framework perspective, you can do things like key log. You can um, dump uh, dump things that were, were being stored in the, the clipboard. You can take screenshots. Um, and the reason that they ported it over to Python is for the purpose of attacking OS X based systems. Now, as as uh, you know, more and more environments are becoming more diverse. They're not just being Windows shops anymore. They're actually including more Mac OS X devices. 
um, you know, us as pen testers, we need we need more more tools, things like this, to go attack those types of systems, and that's the point behind this entire framework. Um, you know, I we I personally came up against a few Mac environments, and uh, you know, it's going to be great having having a, a toolkit to not only um, con control uh, via via command shell. Um, but also perform post exploitation activities. Things like they, they actually ported over the uh, you know Git GPP password um, functionality, which would go out to a domain controller and and look for um, clear text passwords that you could pull out of group policy preference files. Um, so it's it's going to be very similar to the way PowerShell and Power works, but it's also in Python now, which is awesome. So uh, yeah, check that out if you're a pen tester and you are coming up against a Mac OS X environment sometime soon. Check out Empire. Oh, lastly, the stagers, uh, when, you, when you go to build a stager for the Mac, it actually includes a default check for Little Snitch. So if you are familiar with Little Snitch, um, it's, it's basically a little firewall application that uh, is very popular on Mac systems um, that will basically pop up and alert you if a new piece of software is trying to connect out of your system. Um, so <laughs> they've built a check-in to look for that to see if that, that process is running. But if, if it's running, it won't try to launch the stager. Awesome. It's great stuff. That's it for this edition of Hack Naked TV. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you want to check out more Hack Naked TV, check out hacknaked.tv. You can check out the show notes at wiki.securityweekly.com. I'm going to be talking at Sandspire on June 16th at 8.15 p.m. I'm going to be doing a talk on Pentest Apocalypse, where I'm going to be kind of going through the top 10 things that I see in most environments that basically cause them to have a pen test apocalypse of sorts. You can email us at the show at hacknaked.tv and I'm on Twitter at DaftHack. Thanks and have a great week.